our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, and our God. Let us stand together at this time. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth remain silent before him. Let us join together as our choir leads us in our congregation of him. this day our daily bread gracious God we appeal to you the God of creation Jesus Christ our redemptive lover and Holy Spirit our guider and comforter we come before you this morning thanking you for everything that you have done in humankind for we know it is your will that is going to be done down here on earth as it is in heaven. And God, we wait with great expectations for each day a portion of your will will take place before our very eyes. Oh God, we thank you this morning uh, for waking up us up. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You brought us this far on the journey, but you did. You blessed our seniors uh, like no other, but you did. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You touched them. You kept them when they was up. You kept them when they were down. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Jesus, 
Oh God, we thank you for the perpetuator of our sins, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who made it all worth living. And we say thank you for Jesus today. Uh, thank you for this great institution in which we can come and make contact with you. We say thank you for that and his leadership. And God now may uh, the Holy Spirit conduct the remainder of this service and we will make sure Jesus Christ get the glory. Amen. 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 church come and go where say it church somebody say it peace and happiness said no more sickness in that land.
got a mother. Oh, I got a loved one. Question, will you come and go?
something begin to happen. Oh, yes, it does. When I call you, when I call you, oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I got. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, I Lord. Give our music manager for another round of applause. Amen, amen. We thank Dr. Carpes for the spirit and the strength of our morning's prayer. Amen. At this time, we ask that Sister Sebastian Taylor will come forth with a special appeal as it relates to our women's conference that's coming up. Amen. Let's go and give ourselves, a, give her our attention as she comes now with a special appeal at this time. Amen. Good morning. Well, I'm Bastine Taylor with the Women's Ministry, and <laughs> Reverend Philip, you got me. Okay. Yes, and we just want to invite everyone to the 2016 Women's Conference, which will be held this Saturday right here in the Fellowship Hall. The cost is $20, and the $20 is for adults, but it's free for any students. Um, this year's theme is No More Crumbs, and we have a dynamic speaker. Um, out of Rock Hill, the Reverend Michelle Newman. Sorry, I said I wasn't going to get nervous, but of course, once you get up here, you do. Um, but like I say, the today is the last day to register, and we'll have, um, I'm sorry, we'll have members of our women's ministry in the front and in the back. The registration cost, as I said, was $20, and we're just looking to have a great time this Saturday um, with some fun fellowshipping, and we'll have food. Lunch will be provided as well as continental breakfast. I um, think that's our pill, and we just wish to see you there. Thank you. And that starting time will be 9 o'clock. And they say today is the last day. So if they register during the week, of y'all not taking any money Saturday, right? Is that? Okay, I'm going to tease that, bro. They will take it as you bring it. Amen, somebody. But to make sure we are Baptist Church, we will receive your giving. Amen. They receive it at that time. Michelle is somebody's preacher. I ran Revival in Rock Hill for the Pleasant Ridge Baptist Church. Reverend Gary Walton, who used to pastor the Mount Zion Baptist Church in Chapin. Uh, he surpassed there. Michelle is one of his associate ministers. Great preacher, great songs, but also a great spirit. And when you combine all that together, you're going to have a powerful anointing. Amen. So we're looking forward to what God has given her to share with us during that time. Uh, will our visitors please stand and remain standing at this time? Our visitors, your first time visiting, stand and remain standing. Amen, amen, amen. Again, we welcome you to the Central Baptist Church. We consider the distinct privilege and supreme honor for you to be here with us today. There are many other places, Sister Kennedy, you could have been. Well, we're glad that you chose Central to be your welcome spot. We know that you're running for, is it the county council? County seat seven, and she is her daughter Kimberly, and Kimberly husband Bobby. They are members of our church, and Sister Kennedy is no stranger to us. I know her husband Theodore. I was there for his home going service, and we've known her for many years. Know that we're praying for you, we're praying with you. When service is over, you'll be able to greet the members and the vegetables, shake their hand, and and wish them well. And we're wishing you well. We're praying for you. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you. Good evening. You know, God is an awesome God. He can do any and everything but fail. If you are a breast cancer survivor, will you please stand at this time and remain standing? Amen, amen. Remain standing. 
If you know of someone within your family who's a breast cancer survivor, stand and remain standing. And if you've had someone that's close to you in your family that has transitioned from life to the other side because of breast cancer, will you stand? Amen, amen, amen. Again, we salute you on this day as we salute you on Breast Cancer Awareness. We thank God for you. We are praying with you. We are praying God's health and strength for you. Let's give them another hand to us. Amen. 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 So we thank God for each and every one of you. Prior to lifting the tithes and offering, we're going to have a selection by our Jubilee Choir. They're going old school today. They're going from the choir stand where they normally sit there in the audience today. So they're doing old school, our Jubilee Choir. I want to thank the Jubilee Choir for allowing me to take them out to dinner last week. Amen, somebody. Amen. We had a great time. Then with Miss Cook. <laughs> we had a great time in fellowship with them. Just sitting down, relaxing, knowing each other, and just having a good time in Jesus' name. Amen. I had a great time. Thank y'all so much for allowing me just to pay for y'all dinner. Amen. It was just an honor and a privilege to be able to do it. Thank y'all so much. Amen. Now we will have a selection by our Jubilee Choir. I don't know why Deacon S. Glover is over there. Tell her, Melinda, you can come right on over here with the Jubilee Choir and y'all can do y'all song. Amen, somebody. All right. Let me stand my Jubilee Choir. Jubilee Choir, where you stand? Amen. Everybody in this section, all y'all Jubilee today, stand. Everybody stand, all y'all.
Amen. Thank you so much, Jubilee. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 We have some very active, very young senior citizens. Amen. Amen. I praise God for them. A few years back, we went on a cruise, and the title of the cruise was Chilling with the Pastor. And you had to be a senior citizen to go on the cruise. And we took 40-something senior sister Kennedy on a cruise at no cost to them. Amen. So now everybody said, well, Ray, up soon as we get to it'll be senior, when the cruise going to come back up again? Amen. And we took two nurses with us to help provide medication, to do whatever they needed to do along the line. And as we boarded the ship and we got ready to go in there, they got, everybody gathered around. They said, Pastor, can you gather around us one minute? I thought it's the appropriate thing to do. These are seniors. We're going to go on the ship. We're going to gather together and have a moment of prayer. One of the wise seniors said, Pastor, we want to say one thing to you. What said? They said, Pastor, whatever happens on this ship, stay on this ship. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. We thank God for our sickness. Amen. Let us prepare now to give back to God a portion of that which the Lord has blessed us with. Truly, you cannot be God-given no matter how hard you try. The more you give to God, the more God will give back to you. It is a joy to be able to give. Amen. It is a joy to be able to give. I've learned, my brother and sister, one of the greatest joys in my life is being able to bless someone else. When you bless someone else, God is going to open up a door for you to receive more than you gave to someone else. And blessings are not always materialistic. It's not always in the form of money. Do you know that being a, your right mind is a blessing? Huh? Do you know just to get up another day that it's a blessing? Huh? Huh? The old singer used to say, if I can't say a word, I'll just wave my hand. It's just a blessing to be in the number one more time. Amen? Some days sit down and write a list when you think about what you don't have. Then write another list and think about what the Lord has blessed you with. I guarantee your list on your right side or I weigh your list on your left side because God is still in the blessing business. Let us stand. Amen, amen. Ushers, the lobby is clear. We're equal opportunity to give out. We just open that door. I want to make sure we don't leave nobody out. Amen. Amen. Someone is coming in now. See how God works. We're equal opportunity. Amen. You cover the lobby, Weezy? Go check the park lot. No, I'm just sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. We're good. <laughs> we're good, we're good. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity to bring your tithes and our offering in the storehouse. We really read your word, declared that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And your word said that you would open up the wonders of heaven. You will pour out as a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. God, we now stand in need of a blessing. And we know that you're still in the blessing business. We pray for those faithful tithers. We pray for those who have not yet matured in the faith of giving. And we pray for those who have it now, but their hearts have just not been touched enough. Bless right now like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remain standing outside our face and wall, inside our face each other. Follow the direction of your usher as we're led into music now by our voices of praise music ministry.
Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much for what you, that which you've given for the advancement of God's kingdom here on earth. To our senior citizens, we say to you that we encourage our senior citizen executive committee to plan a function at least once a quarter for our senior citizens. I want them doing some every month, but at least once a quarter, plan a function for our senior citizens. If they got to go, if they got to travel, let's hit the road. Plan something every quarter. Once a quarter, we want an activity for our senior citizens. Amen? Amen. We have our president there looking senior citizen rich. And he's enjoying it, too. He's just like good. He, Reverend Kenneth Wilson standing up. Oh, he just shining. He just glowing. Amen, somebody. Amen. And we have our vice president. Somebody asked me and said, is Honey Bond? I said, Honey who? <laughs> Sister Rwanda, I can stand up with her. She's our vice president, amen. I, I don't know any more officers, Reverend. You know the rest of the officers? Introduce your officer. I, I know the first two. You got to help me with the rest. Oh, the first lady secretary? I should have known that, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, man. All right, Sister Velma, the assistant secretary, all right. Deputy chaplain, all right. There go Beverly, the hat lady today. Hey, Beverly. Deacon Leroy Wilson. Man, y'all got a sharp looking committee group there. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank y'all so much to our senior citizens. Amen. We praise God for them. On the pastor's observation, before we move toward the preach word, let me remind you that on this week, our Get Seminary Annual Association will convene at the Central Baptist Church starting today at 5 o'clock. We will have our youth hour here at the Central Baptist Church. We've been asked to provide the devotional services, and many of our youth will be singing with the mass choir that they will have beginning at 5 today. On tomorrow night, our business meeting for the Get Simmons starts at 545, and you're welcome to attend the business meeting. Then our devotional service will start at 7, and then our preach word will be at 730, Dr. Charles B. Jackson, Sr. of the Brooklyn Baptist Church. On Tuesday through Thursday, each day we'll meet at 445 and have dinner from 445 to 545. Then we will break out into our various classes that we would have. Then we'll have our lecture prior to the class and then the preach word each evening. Tuesday night is Congress night. Our Congress of Christian Education will be in charge. Wednesday night, our Women's Division will be in charge. And Thursday night, our parent body would be in charge. Some of the classes we have on the lineup for you are on the Minister's Division. That's the division with pastors that I will be teaching in the Minister's Division. We will have a class for our deacons. We will have a class for our trustees. We will have a class in Baptist doctrine as well. We have a class in our women's division section as well. And we would have an array of classes, a music class that Brother Harold Broker would be teaching along the line. So we have great classes, great information. Come out and let's be at home as we celebrate what we're doing with our Get Sim Association. Then Dr. Jamie O. Graham, our moderator, will close us out on Thursday night from the St. John Baptist Church with our closing address given to us by our moderator. They're coming to our house, and we need to be at home. I was listening to a newscast the other day, and someone was interviewing Deion Sanders. They asked him how did he feel about the new stadium they was building in Atlanta, the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, because the Georgia Dome, they're going to replace that. Deion Sanders said, the Georgia Dome is my house. He said, I'm prime time. I, the dome belonged to me. You couldn't come in the dome because prime time on unless I gave you permission. Well, I want you to know this house is the Lord's house. And we're expected as children of God to be in place in his house as we agreed to accept the invitation to host our Get Simmed Association. Well, we're looking for a great time this week. Let's come out. Let's attend the class. You cannot grow if you do not know. Can I say that again? You cannot grow if you do not know. And I reminded you last week that good people elect bad politicians who, who, because they won't vote. 
Can I say that again? Good people elect bad politicians because they won't vote. We'll sit back and say, my vote don't make any difference. What if 1,000, 100,000 people felt the same way you felt? Then you'll wind up with somebody in office that you don't want in office because you didn't go vote. Our, 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 our voice is our, the voting. That's where we get our strength from in the ballot box. So we encourage you to go out and exercise your right to vote. I want to thank God today for the presence with us today of Reverend Christopher Goff. We thank God for Reverend Hezekiah Carpets, and we thank God for Reverend Flossie Montgomery and Reverend Karen Phillip. But it's time right now to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. It's time right now. Is that for me, Evan? I see you standing there with a piece of paper, so I just, you bring it on. I just felt that was for me. <laughs> uh, Y'all keep praying for me. Amen. Let me see what this say. Can you recognize the remaining committee members by asking them this thing? <laughs> will the remaining committee members, will you please stand? Oh, okay. That's why I need to recognize the remaining committee members. Amen. Thank you so much. This is like my wife's handwriting. They will draft somebody to say it to me. Amen, somebody. Amen. Thank you, remaining committee members. Amen. Praise God for you. At this time, as we prepare to hear from God, we thank God for our preacher, for our senior citizen hour today. And no one could present him or know more about him than his wife. Amen, somebody. So we're going to ask that Sister Juanita Harper comes now and prepare to present her husband to us. And after selection by our music ministry, our voice of praise, then we will hear the preach word for today. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible said, be ye ready at all times, right. which he caught me off guard. But I know my husband better than anyone else knows how. I was, I'm here to introduce the speaker of the day, whom is no other than my husband and father of our three children. We are married, we would, we are married for 38 years. He was born in Kenston, North Carolina to Eva and George Harper, Jr., Sr. He's the only child. I met my husband in New Jersey. We later became a member of the Mount Chapel Missionary Baptist Church in 1982. Him and I came a part of the Deacon and Deacon S Board and from then on, my husband became, went to theological school, which for two years became a minister. And here he is today, sitting on the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend George E. Harper. All right. All right. All right.
was cold. It chilled my body, but not my soul. If you don't believe that I've been reading, then follow me down to the Jordan Street. I say, Jordan River, it's chilly and cold. It chilled my body, but not my soul. Oh, I came to tell you. Oh, I came to tell you. Oh, I came to tell you. water was cold. It chilled my body, but not my soul. If you don't believe that I've been reading, then follow me down to the Jordan Street. I say, Jordan River is easy as gold. It eats your body, but not your mind. Oh, I came to tell you. Oh, I came to tell you. Oh, I came to tell you. You said. You said. Oh, I step in the water. I step in the water, I way down in that water. But anybody been to the river? Or anybody been baptized? Have your soul been converted? And now you feel alright. Said I step in the water. I step in the water. And I step in the water. And I step in the water. I step in the water. I step in the water, I fell in the water, and the water was cold. It chilled my body, it chilled my body, it chilled my body, but not on my soul. So I step in the water, away down in that water, away down in that water. Are anybody been to the river? Are anybody been baptized? Have your soul been converted? And now you feel alright. Did I step in the water? I step in the water, and the water was cold. It chilled my body. It chilled my body. It chilled my body. It chilled my body. But not in my soul. Oh, I came to tell you. Oh, I came to tell you. Oh, I came to tell you. Away down in that water, away down in that water. Are anybody been to the river? Are anybody been baptized? Have your soul been converted? And now you feel alright. Said I step in the water. I step in the water. Said step in the water. I step in the water. And the water was cold. And the water was cold, and the water was cold. It chilled my body, it chilled my body, it chilled my body, but not my soul. I say amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the rich, a rich like me. I want was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. Said I step in the water. I 
fell in the water. I fell in the water. I way down in that water. I way down in that water. I ain't been to the river. Oh, everybody been baptized. And your soul been reverted. And now you feel alright. So I fell in the water. I fell in the water. I fell in the water. And the water was cold. And the water was cold. When the water was cold, oh, till, till my body, but not, not my soul, oh, yeah, not, not my soul, oh, yeah, not, not my soul, oh, yeah, not, not my soul, oh, yeah. I can't stand to tell you, oh, I came to tell you, oh, I came to tell you, say this morning does not matter how old I am it don't matter how young you are Jesus loves us and he loves us equally hallelujah so I come by to just say a word or two on that behalf amen and to Reverend Ezel and to all these fine ministers of the gospel, I say good morning to you. May God ever bless your ministry. I'm just glad to be here. I have been through some times, as you have, some ups and some downs. But through it all, Jesus raised me. So I come this morning on that behalf. And I want to say a word for me to you from 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. two verses, 15 with the 57th and 58 verse. All right, all right. But thanks be to God, yes, which give us the victory uh -huh. through our Lord Jesus Christ. I hear you. Therefore, my beloved brethren, yes, let's stand. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, mm -hmm. unmovable, always abounding in the works of 
of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 I'm going to read one more. You may be seated. I'm going to read one more verse, two verses to corroborate that where I just read in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. And he said, now thanks be unto God, listen to what he said, which always, which always give us the, which always cause us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest savior of his knowledge by us in every place. Here we are, I want to say. For we are unto God a sweet savoring uh, instance of Christ and them that are saved and them that are perished. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's read in the word of God. And um, for a topic, I want to use our triumph or our victory through Jesus Christ. All right, all right, all right. Our triumph or our victory in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because that has no age boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's ageless. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And we come to see as I get into the message here, that whoever believes in God's Son has eternal life. Not they're going to get it. Has eternal life. He is all you need. You don't need to wait for eternal life because it begins the moment you believe. You don't need to wait for it yeah. because it's already yours. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You don't need to worry about it uh -huh. because you have been given eternal life by God himself and it's guaranteed. Mm, yeah. Hallelujah. Mm, all right. For the Bible declares that we are one of my favorite things that's said in back. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That makes us somebody. We walk this earth today. And for anybody that don't know who you are, just tell them, you are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, that you are not what you might see, but you are a spirit. Uh, 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 and you have a soul and you live in a body and I don't care what your name is or who they call you you know one thing that you are spirit yeah. and it's made in the image of God yeah, yeah, yeah. hallelujah yeah, good news today good news, good news through Jesus Christ I want you to know he's at work right now yeah, on your behalf he brings every possible good for those who love him uh -huh. and even those that don't love him. Amen. And he are seeking to please him in, his, in life. He's seeking to please you. Yeah. So what, what we have to do is uh, put our mind, our hearts, and our body, especially our mind, we, we go back to Romans 12 and 2. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing your mind with the word of God. Then you will know and you can prove what the will of God is. If you don't have none of this word, you have a falling out. You become stuck. You become like stagnant water. I ain't talking about nobody now. I'm just talking about my, what I'm talking about. 
right? I just, I just got to this church, and I love this church, and I love the pastor, and I love all the ministers, and I don't want to be thrown out. But I, but I was told many years ago, if you're going to preach the gospel, preach the truth. Yes, sir. And if your members know the truth, I said it will set them free. So I'm looking for some freedom on myself, and I'm looking for freedom for you as my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I want you to be like God wants you to be. So don't take nothing I say but for love. Apostle Paul was exceedingly grateful to the Lord for his victory. After victory, after victory, he experienced it as he gave himself to God in faith and faithfulness to God's purpose for his life. I come to tell you, you have a purpose in life. You are not just here haphazard. We might then become the biggest success but we can look forward to be successful. I'm looking forward to be more successful. And I know the only way to be successful is to love, have faith in Jesus Christ, and know that it's not about what you do or what you've done. Uh It's about what Christ has done in your life. And he paid the awesome price and went on Calvary. He paid the price for you and he paid it for me. And and if I do any less than my very best, then let me be. I must do the very best I can. We find our Paul, he was always pointing to God as the source of all that was good. Hallelujah. And God is our source for all that is good for us. So we, we, we got to understand uh, that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you, he said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. If you just be aware of me and take me in. What we have to do is every day, every day, Christ has to be in my heart and in my mind. I come to church on Sunday to celebrate that Christ was in my heart and in my mind and in my body every day. I walk Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I lift up the name of Jesus on Sunday. Yes, sir. I'm glad about it. Yes, sir. When we say senior citizen, that just about. Maybe not all few children. It's just about taking all of us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Uh, you become a senior citizen now, they say, after 50 or 55. So that's just about, just about take care of all of us. So we won. We are one body in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I come to tell you too that Christ wants to cause us to triumph in our day of decisions. Yes, sir. He wants us to acknowledge him. See, that's what faith is. You're acknowledging Christ and, 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 and you decide in your heart by the Holy Spirit what he said, I'm going to believe. 
Jesus say, I'm the righteousness of God. Yes. My wife may say, well, he wasn't too righteous today. <laughs> but God yes, is talking about my inner man, my spirit. I'm righteous most every day. Uh, uh, Amen. Uh, Amen, right. Sister Hop. Right. <laughs> so, Christ wants to cause us to be triumphant. It doesn't matter how old we are. Doesn't matter how young we are. Christ came for the whole world. He didn't come just for the young, the middle aged, or the old, or the old, old. He came for everybody. And everybody had the same promise uh, that if you'll lift me up, uh, I'll and raise me up. I'll be your God. You will be the I'll be my redeemed one. I will heal you. By my words I said 2000 went by his stripes. You were healed. Not you were going to be healed, but you were healed. And so when the aches and pain comes on us that's a little over 50, I uh Let's not look at the pain. Let us look at what God's word said. I am the God that healeth you. We take that in and we believe that and we begin to say that until God manifests your healing. Until it may take a while. I've been on the sick bed, but I, I, I knew one thing. That, that God has taught me that I would be all right. Yes. So when they operated on me, yes. on my head, the next day, the doctor said, boy, you, might, you can go home. And they operated on my head. But it was not the doctor, although Jesus carried his hand. It was not me, but it was the Christ in me. So the Christ in in you yeah. is more powerful than anything that you can come up with. Right. It's power. And somebody says the most powerful force on planet Earth yeah. is the Spirit of God yeah. working in you. Yeah. And He's working in, in and every one of us that have said, I believe uh. that Jesus would die on the cross for me. And he shed his blood. And on the third day he rose. And the Bible said, if I believe that, thou shalt be saved. Yeah. So I come to tell you, if you believe that this morning, yeah. if you believe that yesteryear, if you believe that ten years ago, you're saved and you have eternal life. Yeah. Uh, you're somebody now. When you walk this street and the kids that... Acting ugly, you can say, you must don't know who I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody need to tell you who I am. Yeah. I'm a child of almighty God. And the spirit of that living Christ lives in me. You can't win no matter how you go about it. Because Jesus is on my side. Yeah. He's on your side. Yeah. He's on their side. Because I believe that Jesus was raised up from the dead yeah. just for me. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are confronted with many victories, I want you to know. Some of them lead to success and happiness. Others lead to defeat and despair. So it's important that we look to Christ who stand at every fork of the road seeking to give you guidance. The only reason you didn't get his guidance because you didn't seek it. Uh, you didn't ask for it by faith. But if you seek it, and he says, seek ye first the kingdom and, and all these other things 
I'll be added unto you. And then he said, one of my favorite, I'm a God that cannot lie. And all my promises, all my promises is yes and amen. Woo! That's good news. He cannot lie. And all his promise is yes and amen. Let the church say amen for me, please. So we know some of them lead to despair, but we know Christ is on our side. And he's standing there. And the Bible say he's standing at the right hand of the Father to ever make intercessions for you. The devil stands before God and accuses you. The Bible says day and night. But Jesus said, let him accuse. I, I, I stand at the right hand of my father and I make intercession for him. Yeah. What the devil accuses me and want to make for bad, I will make for good. Yeah. I, I, I will cross out his sins. I, I would be for good in his life. Let him just acknowledge me and have faith in me. Christ too, wants to cause us to triumph in our days of difficult. Because we have some sometimes. When Paul wrote to the church of Philippi, he expressed joy over the fact that all the things that had happened to him has served to advance the cause of Christ and to enlarge the kingdom of God. He also wrote that through Jesus Christ, he had found strength to adjust himself to all circumstances of life. He confirmed it by the Spirit of God when he spoke triumphantly uh, in Philip 4.13, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. For he knew, just as Jesus has said to us in John 15 and 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done unto you. Uh, Jesus said that. You look in the Bible, that'll be in the red. All right. Paul's desire was to strengthen in times of trials that he might show the world his triumph in Jesus Christ. I come to ask you this morning, what's your desire? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. He said, if you delight yourself in me, mm -hmm. I'll give you the desires of your heart. And you know why? Let me say this. Why it may not be happening to you this way It's because you didn't believe it. Uh, my, it might as well, we might as well know the truth. Yeah. My healing. I didn't believe that. We say we do. And if we say we do and we do, then we have confirmation right within us. Amen. So what, what, what should we do? What we should do is take that word that God said that he would heal you. It's in many places. That, take that word when he said that I'll give you the desires of your heart if, you, if your bills are need paid. You know, we, we all need our bills paid. <laughs> so he said, take Everything, everything to the Lord in prayer. Yes, sir. The little things. If I can't find my keys, I say, Lord, please show me where my keys are. Because he said, take it all to him in prayer. There's no little things, no big things, all things. 
are of God and you belong to God. So he wants you to try up in your days of gift cover. Amen? Amen. Paul knew, just as Jesus has said in John 15, he said, if you abide in me, I'm going to say it again, because this is essentially, I, I will, if the time, I will explain that some more, because I just want us to know, uh, uh, if, I, if you are not connected to the vine, for you are the branch, I'm the branch, so you got to stay connected to the vine. Amen. Amen. Paul desire was to strengthen in times of trials that we may show the world that we have the victory in Jesus Christ. So as I ask you, what is your desire? You don't have to tell me. It's good to tell someone that knows the Lord for themselves as you supposed to. But Christ, know this, he wants you to triumph in the days of your defeat. That's right, that's right. You may be going down, 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 but Christ, if you believe him, will begin to pick you up, up, up. So I say to you, don't stay in the bottom of the basement. Get you some word and get it in you. Get it in your spirit so you can come on up to the top floor in Jesus Christ. I, I, if you don't get this word in you, you'll be stagnated. And you know what stagnated water is? It's like where the mosquitoes and things are come to live. But you are as a Christian, and you are a born again Christian. You 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 rise up. You are rise up. All you have to do is go to Him in prayer, and you can rise up. Yeah. Don't be lazy. Yeah. Don't be unfaithful. Yeah. But raise up in the name of Jesus Christ and say, "I come out of this. I would don't dare dare to remain the same." I don't care what predicament you're in, how low you are, Jesus is in the picking up business. He ain't down there doing the pushing down. He's up in the picking up business. I get low sometimes, but when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for me, my heart's had to sound out, hallelujah, hallelujah. I know that he's for me and not against me. For I know Jesus is Lord. Yes. I'm almost through, y'all. So let us look to him. Let us not stay in the same predicament yeah. that we are in today. Amen. Next year this time, you want to think and know that you are better than you was yesterday because that is the way God made you. He took you from death and promote you to life. And now it's up to you as you praise in prayer to come out of this. I, I, I made him raise to the mountain top, but I ought to at least be trying to get out of the valley. And I get out of this valley, not on my own strength, but when I know that my Lord can do anything but fail, I know his word is true, and I speak his word in my mouth. I want to know and believe that I will rise a little higher. Amen? Perhaps the greatest defect that the natural human faces is death. A lot of folks afraid of death. But we as Christians, we don't fear death. No, sir. We don't fear death. It's inevitable to come. Amen? 
So death is said to be the last enemy of humans. But thanks be to God who always give us the victory even over the enemy God will cause his children to triumph through faith in Jesus Christ. You are triumph even in death. Death have lost its sting. Amen. And all absent who is it? What God said? Jesus. Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. So I don't have to fear death. It will come. It will come. But we don't have to fear it. Because we know we have a home. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I go away and prepare a home for you. Where I be am, you will be also. And if I'm going to be with Jesus, when I die, I ain't ready to die now, y'all. <laughs> I hear you, Reverend. I hear you. I love this life. Yes, sir. And I love your, my family and this church I have grown to love because you are so lovable and you have the most lovable pastor. So I have grown to love it. So I ain't ready to go nowhere right now. But when I do, I don't want to talk and turn. I want to be like Jesus. Bow my head and the locks of my shoulder and go from death to life yeah. on heaven. Amen? Amen. 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 Even over this enemy will cause his children to trial. And I wanted to bring this message because sometime as we grow a little older, we begin to not have, we have faith in God, but we, we, we begin to not want to do, and we, we, we just want to lay back. And I tell you, all of us that's over 50, don't lay back because you don't want to be stagnant. I, I, I'm a little older. I don't run like I used to. I don't do this and do that like I used to. But one thing I do, Paul said, but there's one thing I do, I forget about the past and I look to the future. I'm going to press. I don't care what's happening. I don't care how old I am. I'm going to press. I'm going to press when the water get up to here. And when everything get to there, I'm going to press. I'm pressing, Lord. I'm pressing. I'm pressing. I'm pressing for the mark of the high calling of God. Yes, Pressing has no age. Uh, that's right. You press in your prayers. You press in your love for others. Yeah, yeah. You press in your giving. Yes. You press in your thanksgiving. Mm. That's right. And you say, thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we should express this gratitude today. We should not wait till tomorrow. The Bible says we can. Pray. God is a spirit. We should worship him in spirit and truth. It doesn't matter where, but it does matter if you do. To express our thanksgiving and our gratitude, 
We should express our thanksgiving for the triumph, for the victory of the past and the victories that we have came, God has brought us through in the present. And we're going to thank him today for what he's going to do. He's strengthening our faith as we face the future. For we now know who holds our future. Yes, sir. The greater our faith, the greater will be our triumph, triumph through Christ Jesus. First John 5, 5 says in the story, who is he? Mm. Talking about you and me. Mm -hmm. Who overcome the world? Mm -hmm. But who he that believed that Jesus is the son of God? And I ask you today, do you believe yes, that Jesus is the Son of God? Right. If you do, stand on your feet and give him some praise, if you can. Yeah. Stand on your feet yeah. and tell Jesus he's yeah. Lord yeah. to the glory of the Father. Stand on your feet yeah. and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I know you love me because he brought me from a mighty long way and you are bringing me right out right now. I may be sick in my body, but I believe, Jesus, you are bringing me up, bringing me out, and then bringing me in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's right. We give you your praise. You may be seated. As I go to my seat, let me tell you, and remind you again, Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for wanting to hear it. Thank you, Brother. Thank you. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. It was last October this time that the Lord laid upon my heart to express the heart for the preacher, our senior day message. And I told him at that time, and uh, it was a year ago when God placed it on my heart that we need to hear a word from him. Did he not bless us with his word today? Amen. Amen. We have victory. We have triumph through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I love as he went to share his personal testimony. There was a time that he had just had surgery on his head. And, and, and the Lord brought him through that. And he strengthened his faith along the journey. He says, believers, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Again, thank you so much. And, and Pastor Harper, come with the fire, won't he? Amen, somebody. I praise you. I wouldn't want to serve a God that I couldn't feel. Amen, somebody. We praise God much again. Thank you so much, Pastor Abba. Let us stand as we extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. We may have someone up under the sound of my voice want to step out from where you are today to give the pastor your hand and give God your heart. You may come by letter by your Christian experience or candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will God. Whosoever will, let them come. Let me remind you there's nothing you've done in the past, nothing you've done last week or even last night that the Lord cannot forgive you for. We serve a loving and just God, a forgiving God. If we're really willing to repent and put it in the Lord's hand, that God doesn't hold our sins against us when we take it to the Lord. He's a just and forgiving God. He'll cast our sins in the sea of forgetfulness so they shall not rise up anymore. You may come by letter by your Christian experience or candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open as our choir leads us in our invitation to him. Yes. Will you come? Will you come today? You got to make up. Oh, he will, he will, he will.
How many of you know he will? All you have to do is come. Yes, yes. Say it again. Yes. The door of the church is open. Will you come? My Lord. This is your day, this is your day, this is your day. Just make up. Let's celebrate, church. Let's celebrate. Let's give God a hand and clap of praise. Let's celebrate. As the Shante comes down, let's celebrate. Yes. Say it, church. Everybody, let's just say it one more time. One more time, you ought to come. Will there be another today? Will you come today? My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. You got to make up. Yes, he will, he will. Yes, yes. It's prayer time at the altar. Will you come to the altar for prayer? It is prayer time at the altar. Yes, it's prayer time.